City Council Miguel Brewer represents a Manhattan district that has lots of issues from illegal cannabis shops to helping house asylum seekers. She's also got a front row seat to the problems at City Hall. Gail, thank you so much for joining me today. I want to talk to you about the migrants, first of all, because, you know, it's sort of an unanticipated problem inherited by the present mayor, but it's impacting your district and the districts of so many members of the City Council. And it now comes as the mayor has enacted what is being called the 60-day rule so that in order to make room in shelters for families with children, he's telling single men, 60 days and you're out and you have to reapply. How do you feel about that? Well, there's a few issues. First of all, I have been to all of the family shelters that exist, the HERCs, as they're known, run by health and hospitals. And in my area, on the Upper West Side, we have at least four hotels. They're not like midtown hotels. They're single room occupancies with families from Venezuela and elsewhere. And we have two single room occupancies, former dorms, with single men. And I will tell you, the 60 rule we've heard about, because I'm obviously at City Hall, but it hasn't been clearly said with a note that you have to leave in 60 days. So as we speak, you know, there are some ch challenges when you have, I don't know, 400, 500 men in one building on the block that never had anything but students in that dorm. Um, but I do feel that we are a city that welcomes immigrants and that we need to find space for everybody. And what we really need are working papers, because every single one of these families and individuals wants to work. So do you think that the mayor's new 60-day rule is ill-advised? I do, because where are they going to go but the street? We don't want to be like some of these cities in California that seem to have a lot of people on the street. Yet yeah, this is a mayor who's made much of the fact that he's ended encampments and that there aren't people living on the streets like they are in other cities. So it, are you saying that now he's going to have to go back on those promises? I'm worried about it because I don't want to be like other cities and I do think that we need to keep finding spaces. I know that's difficult. We need to have a statewide process. I think the governor needs to be involved more. Are you disappointed in her lack of, of... I think we need a statewide process, whether it's her or other counties, we need to have a statewide process. Every single county needs workers. I was at a meeting this morning, and I learned from a very large uh, caterer, many of the restaurants are ecstatic because legally or illegally, they're hiring many of these fabulous workers. I couldn't believe it, many, many. So the issue of we need the workers, the workers want to work, and we should be finding a way to do that. Because if they don't have working papers, they can be taken advantage of. They don't get health benefits. They could be paid less than somebody who has a green card or has working papers. So you're concerned about their fairness. I'm concerned about their fairness. They could lose theft of wages, too. Absolutely. But there's such a disconnect here where we have these great workers. We have jobs that are available, dishwashers, security, et cetera, and yet we have no way of doing that. So we need a statewide process. And of course, the president needs to give us temporary protective status. So are you disappointed with the way the president has treated this whole migrant issue? On the working papers in particular. I'm sure he's afraid of the Republicans because Republicans say, oh, if you give them working papers and more will come. Cut it off. Say today is the deadline. Well, do you also think that it's a political decision because he wants to run for re-election. He takes a look at New York, blew York to him and thinks that New York is going to vote for him, but he's worried about the effect of helping New York in some of these border states like Arizona and states that he wants to hold in the presidential election. I'm sure that's true. It is interesting. We do have more migrants than anywhere else. I just came from the National League of Cities where I am um, on the board in Tacoma, Washington, cities across the country attended. And we seen, I kept bringing up migrants, asylum seekers, we need money, and they're concerned, understandably, about affordable housing for their residents, but we seem to be the only city that has this many migrants. So I think you're correct. So let me ask you this. The mayor now has decided to open another emergency shelter in the parking lot at Creedmoor to hold a thousand single men. So what do you think? Is that a good idea, a bad idea? How's the community going to react? I've never been to Creedmoor. I'm a Manhattan girl. But I will say from my experience, um, I think 
the issue will be from the community's perspective, people will want to work. They are delivering now. So we have a lot of people, communities not ecstatic with uh, motorbikes, e-bikes, et cetera, doing delivery. Again, not legally, I assume, but they have to make some money. That will be one issue. You'll see a lot of bikes. Is so they're concerned that they don't want to have the bikes in their community? Correct. And Creedmoor may have more space. I don't know. I think the other issue is, unlike 70th Street, where there's no space to go hang out, at Creedmoor there may be more outside space than there is on a block on the Upper West Side. So I think the issues are you need to have constant classes on ESL, you need to have constant support in terms of working, if they're going to work, what are their rules, even though it's illegal. There are rules. You can get, sometimes you can get a, a special ID from the IRS. You need to get your ID in New York. The, if you're going to have a thousand people in that location, there has to be constant effort for support in terms of what they need and keep them occupied. So basically what you're saying is the city, while we don't have official word from Washington that you can actually work, the city has to set its own rules for what is really turning into a black market, labor market. Yeah, I think that's true. Now the city is not allowed to tell an undocumented person that they can go to work, but the nonprofits can work with them, you know, some of the immigration groups, and we need to fund them so they can do that. And we need to get legal assistance because if you file papers, again, not everybody's going to get asylum status, like 30% we hear of all of these migrants, but they need to have the legal papers to file because under that filing at a certain period, you can work. So while well, I know that you're not uh, a Queens City Councilwoman, I think you can anticipate you know, how the community is going to react. How do you think they will react? They're already upset. I know that because I have colleagues, obviously, who represent that area and they're upset because they are nervous about what is going to be the impact on my neighborhood. I don't know the community. I don't know how close the neighborhood is to Creedmoor, um, but that's what people are going to be upset about. The, the city, placing people there, needs to have all the services. What's the code of conduct? literally in Spanish, what exactly, if you're going to have the motorbike, where is it going to be? Be careful of the battery, don't put it in the building, where you're going to charge it. They did a good job, the city, I have to say, when they were at the cruise ship terminal. They need to do something similar. So one of the things that the city council did was join together and send a letter to the president asking for more federal help. So in addition to the fact that you want working papers, what else do you think the president should be doing if there wasn't any political considerations? Well, obviously funding. I mean, we are at something close to $1.5 billion so far with the migrants. The mayor estimates it's going to be $4.3 billion very soon. And in order to, the city of New York cannot carry. Already, people who are homeless or who have low incomes and who are just struggling pay paycheck to paycheck are saying, how come the migrants get all the support? What about me? And we don't want that kind of division. The mayor, the president needs to come up with funding for the migrants. It's food. It's lodging. It's all the kinds of supports that I just described. It's very expensive. So what about the governor? Why, has she been sort of AWOL on this? I think the, my understanding is, for whatever reason, many families are being shipped to Buffalo. I don't know what's happening when they get to Buffalo, because I'm not from Buffalo. But what about the other cities? Who will support? What's happening in these different locations? They, too, need jobs So in the community. So are we working to get people the kinds of legal assistance that I just described on a state level? Because it is possible, before you get your asylum papers, to work if you have the certain kinds of legal assistance. What are we doing? And it's not just Venezuelans. You've got, I've met Russians, Ukrainians, Trinidad and Tobago. Some of them have um, TPS. Okay, we're going to have to leave it right there for now. But our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.